In this episode of the K-Pop Blast, I have got a couple of comeback rumors that I would like to share with you. Also, an update to the Clara vs. Players Entertainment sexual harassment scandal and all of that. That is also in this, plus a few more stories which I want to talk about. So, let's get the show started right now. What is going on everybody? My name is Nick from MLW K-Pop and I want to welcome you to the Wednesday episode of the K-Pop Blast. We got some big news stories to talk about plus an update to the Clara story as I said. It's very, it's very, very, very interesting getting very complicated and dirty. So let's get it started with the first story of the day which is where is Juyeon from After School going with her career after she has left Pletus Entertainment and the and graduated from after school. When I talked about that story, I was saying that I was hoping that whatever she does, whether it's acting or singing or anything else, that we will be able, that you know, the fans and other people will be able to support her. And it seems that she is going going to be headed in the directed direction of acting, as she has signed with a signed a contract with an entertainment company called Bit or New Brand. No, what am I saying? Better Entertainment and. That entertainment company is known to have a lot of big name actors and actresses signed to that. So it's all evidence there points towards her going towards, you know, being an actress. So I'm a bit eager to see what her, uh, if she's going to be, what, what her acting debut is going to be. If it's, or debut, but I guess her next acting job. I'm not sure if she's ever done any acting before, but I'm really eager to see what she's going to be coming out with, whether it's a movie or a drama. Hopefully it's a drama because that's a lot easier for me to, uh, you know, find out news about and watch. So I'm really eager to see what she's going to be doing because, you know, it is, you know, you know I want to support this, this artist after she, uh, you know, leaves the group that she's been a part of for a very long time and, you know, with it and help her go in a new direction with her career. So we've got that. Moving on to the next story though, we've got probably, at least in my experience, the fastest fan club naming in the entire, in the world. And that would be Sonamu, which their uh, fan club name has been, basically the Korean translation of it, because I cannot remember what it was, is basically Pinecone. So if you are a fan of Sonamu. If you consider to be part of their, you know, fandom, their fan club, you are a pine cone, which is awesome. I like the combination between ba- Sonamu, which basically means pine tree or something of that sort. And now the fans are pine cones, which is actually kind of cute. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of cute. That's kind of cool. That is really cool. So, you know, unlike a lot of groups where they wait a while, uh, and if you're FX, you're probably never ever going to get a fan fan club name. But uh, Sonamu, a month or yeah, pretty pretty much a month after they've made their debut, their fan club has a name, which is really really awesome. That's awesome to hear. So I don't know. Would I consider myself to be a pinecone? I'm not entirely sure because I really like Sonamu. This is probably the first group in a very 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 long time that I've fallen in love with from their debut. So something to think about. Plus, you know, it's just awesome to have a rookie group that uh, comes out and is like, you know what, I, you know, is, is confident in their existence and their, that they are going to name their fan club before they even come out with another, with another song. So that's awesome. Two thumbs up to TS Entertainment. Despite all the bad things you've done in the past, I definitely agree that this is a pretty decent move. And anybody who likes Sonamu can be pretty happy with the fan club name that they've got, no matter who you are. So now we're going to move on to a bunch of news on new music releases that you can be expecting that can be coming out in the near future or that you should be keeping an eye out for any news on confirmations. First up, we're going to start with a debut or a brand new rookie group from uh, which company is it? DN Entertainment from DN Entertainment, which is called Vivi Diva. And they are supposed to be that they're being labeled as a group that is going to be focusing more and specifically on the you know live performances and being accessible to fans so viva diva a seven i believe it's a seven member girl group which is going to be making their debut sometime in the future um at the moment they're releasing dan entertainment is releasing uh, member teasers for all of the different members of the group so i think that those are definitely worth checking out and 
you know, it's an interesting concept. Whereas in with, you know, K-pop groups in general, with all K-pop groups up until now, they're more focused on what the TV broadcast is. Um, and, you know, I realized that when I went to KCON and, you know, I'm going to, a, I'm going to a K-pop concert, but basically what I was doing was watching a live broadcast of M Countdown. Well, it wasn't a live broadcast, but it was a pre-recorded broadcast of M Countdown. Everything that they did was for the cameras for the most part. Because I think that they did probably two songs out of their five song set that was more for the fans, the audience that was there, than, you know, for the cameras. And, you know, that just really kind of drives home the fact that this, you know, they go on stage and they perform. They, they don't perform for the fans that are in the auditorium or the recording studio watching it. They perform for the camera. They perform for the TV show, the broadcast, because obviously that is where they reach the most people. So having a group that is going to be more focused on live performances and being open and accessible, having fan interactions and all that stuff is very, very interesting. And I'm very interested to see how that comes out. Also interested to see what this group brings to the K-pop scene. I'm very, very interested to see that because from the member teasers, this is a very diverse group with a lot of different, you know, with, with members who have a lot of different specialties. It's not like you have two rappers or anything like that. You know, they're probably going to have like one vocalist and one dancer and one of everything and how that all comes together and what that exactly makes is going to be very, very, very interesting. So we're moving on from a brand new rookie group to some of the biggest comebacks of the entire year and YG Entertainment is rumored to be basically loading all of their guns so that they can fire them in the first half of 2015. Sigh. Big Bang, Winner, Icon, all set to make comebacks or make releases in the first half of 2015, it said. And of course, the most talked about one at this point is Big Bang. Everyone is super excited for that. It's been a very few years, at least, or something like that, since Big Bang has had a comeback. So to have these guys come back is going to be huge. Psy, also the the guy who is ba who is responsible for bringing k-pop or bringing k-pop to the world's attention for a few minutes uh is also definitely a very very anticipated uh comeback and then of course you got icon and winner who are not really rookie groups well i guess they're rookie groups uh you know icon making their debut and then winner making their first comeback i should say um, i th believe and you know these are all really really big groups and of course anything that comes out of YG Entertainment is going to be heavily anticipated. So, you know, YG is looking to take 2015 and make it their own and basically if, you know, the if, if it were a competition to see who would win the first half of the year, it looks like YG is set up to do just that. It depends on who is going to be, you know, making their comebacks and what other companies are making releases over the year, but you know, YG is definitely about, seems to be ready to spoil us with a bunch of absolutely gigantic releases. Now we're moving on to a song that's already been released. It was released at the beginning of the week from, by uh, G Soul called You. He's a 15 year trainee at GYP. And that song is fantastic. You definitely should check it out if you haven't already. But this release marks the launch of a brand new label by JYP called Project J, which is supposed to give their artists a bit more musical, creative freedom with the music that they make. Because, which is good. I'm really happy to see something like this because from a major music company or from a major, um, I guess, producer or someone who has, has a lot of influence in the music industry, uh, because JYP Entertainment is a pop company, entertainment company. That's what they do, right? They don't, they are more, more focused on controlling and molding their artists and all that stuff to make pop music that is, you know, appeals to the masses so that they can make money. Whereas Project J is going to be a bit different from that where they will give their individual artists some, you know, creative freedom. Obviously, they'll probably give them some direction, but ultimately it's going to be down to the artists like G Soul, who we already know is going to be, I guess, launched under that label. Uh, it's going to be a way for them to, you know, express their creative creativity and, you know, make the music that they want to make as opposed to make the music that the company wants them to make, you know. So that's interesting. And I'm, I'm wondering if that means that any of these, uh, any other, you know, if any groups under JYP, if any members from those groups have a solo release or anything like that, if they will be basically considered to be part of project j or if they can say like hey i don't i want to if, if they were 
interested in having a solo debut or solo release, if they can say, I want to have a solo release and I want to do it under Project J, give me some more, you know, so that they can have a bit of creative freedom over what they do or, or anything like that. I'm interested to see how this works out because, you know, as far as pop music, just in general and with pop music in the world, uh, having a lot of, I get, you know, because pop music has the stereotype that it's not very creative music. It just is basically factory made music where you have people, you have guys sitting in a room just turning out, just writing songs constantly and, th you know, just coming out and just like, yeah, this is a song, re release it, throwing out every single song, uh, you know, throwing stuff out a wall and seeing what sticks. So I'm interested to see how this works out because, you know, K-pop, the Korean pop music industry is definitely one of the most factory made music or um i guess music scenes in the world and you know it's kind of it's very similar to the way that american pop music was back in way 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 back in the day back you know a long time ago i don't want to go so far back but i want to say probably about the 40s 50s uh even earlier than that where they were just you know basically people were sitting down in offices you know composers writers and stuff and they were just writing songs and they weren't writing specifically for a an artist or a musician or anything like that. They were just writing songs, and then those songs were given to the various, you know, musicians. So, I'm, I'm, like I said, very, very, very excited and interested to see what this uh, this project is going to be coming out with. Project J is going to be coming out with. And, of course, it would be JYP to be bringing this idea to Korea because, you know, for, he's, he has foreign education. He's been... You know, he spent a lot of time abroad, so he's been introduced to a lot of different foreign ideas. And I wonder if this is going to change the way that the, you know, Korean music industry, the mass marketed music in Korea is, you know, approached. And if it means more artist freedom and all that stuff, I'm all for it. Definitely, I'm all for it. So that is that. I think I've spent enough time talking about that, saying the same exact things over and over and over again. So let's move on to the final story of the show, which is going to be an update to the Clara story. And if you missed the last episode, basically uh, Clara has been trying to get out of her contract with Polaris Entertainment. A contract that she has with Polaris Entertainment, there's a bit of a dispute as to who has, or the amount of control that Polaris has over her um, through that contract. So Clara wants to get out of it and Polaris refused. And then Clara filed a lawsuit to get out, to cancel her contract, which of course that's what you have to do. You have to go through you know, legal action to do that if the other party is unwilling to terminate. And she's also uh, came with her lawsuit with an accusation of sexual harassment against the CEO. Apparently, the CEO has been or has uh, sent, I guess, text messages to her that she that made her feel uncomfortable. And so, you know, she said, you know, this is sexual harassment and that's the accusation. So, Polaris Entertainment has replied with uh, the, I guess the counter reply to that is, well, here we go. So, you say that we've sexually harassed you through text message. Well, let's release all the text messages and we will release your contract to clear up any misunderstandings, get all of the information out in the air and uh, see, you know, let everyone know what is actually going on. So I'm really interested because, you know, this is one of those things where like, it's like, look, see, we're, re we're willing to expose the truth. And if you deny that, if you refuse our offer to, you know, reveal all this information, then that kind of puts you in a bad spot. So for me, I kind of, <laughs> Polaris is doing something that, I mean, they're kind of putting Clara up against the wall where either she, you know, openly admits that she is lying, if she actually is lying by saying, by agreeing to reveal the contents of these text messages and her contract, or she just flat out denies, doesn't allow, you know, rejects the request from Polaris to reveal all this information and that puts her in a, in a difficult spot because now the thought is that she must be hiding something and that, of course, what she would be hiding is that she's lying about what is that her accusation is completely false. So I'm eager to see what is coming up with that. And I know that there are a few news stories that I've seen previously before I wrote this. So I'm probably going to have another update on Saturday for this, for this, uh, this saga and it's going to continue. So part three on Saturday. You should definitely look forward to it. So that is going to be it for this episode of the K-Pop Blast. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Um, before you leave though, I would really like it if you would check out my social media profiles. You can just mess, you know, Twitter, Kako Talk, Facebook. The, those are my usernames down there. Also 
The links for those profiles are down in the description below as well. So if you want to follow me there, message me on Kako Talk. It's so much fun. I love doing it with all my fans. And uh, that is going to be it for this episode. As always, I want to thank you for watching this episode, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.